Hi, I'm Carrie Tracy. My students used to call me Miss Tracy. You can call me either one, that's fine. I'm so glad you're here. I wonder if you're stuck at home this week like I am, and I thought, you know what? If we're here, we might as well make the most of it. So we're gonna do something fun. We're gonna be doing a series of different kinds of tower challenges throughout the week. I'm gonna have kids of all ages joining. I'm sure I have some in kindergarten. I'm sure I have some all the way up to eighth grade and even beyond. So I'm gonna give you some different choices so that you can build the tower that makes the most sense for you based on how old you are and maybe how much experience you might have with STEM challenges. The very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is ask your parent or whoever the responsible adult in your home is if you have permission to make these towers, where might be a good spot to do that and which materials you are allowed to use. So let's get started with materials. I'm gonna give you some different options because everybody has different things in their house and I'm not sure what you are going to have available. What I usually use when I'm doing this in my classrooms is just a couple of pieces of printer paper. They can already be used. That way we're reusing materials and not wasting something that's brand new. But if you don't have printer paper, we have lots of other options. You could use notebook paper. Maybe you have something in your backpack or your folders that you don't need anymore. You could use that. You could use junk mail. Ask your parents if there's any junk mail around. I bet there is, there usually is. You could use an empty cereal box if there's one that's finished. You could use any kind of basically clean trash. So this was a little bag that um, cookies were in before, but I could repurpose this and make a tower. Some other materials that work for tower building are index cards. Again, they can be used. Old business cards. Ask your parent or responsible adult. They might have some of these extras lying around. And a few other options are cardboard scraps, maybe old file folders you aren't using, old lunch bags, and even tissue paper. Now, some of these more soft and flexible materials might be a little bit more challenging to use. We'll talk about that more in just a minute. And a couple other things that you'll also find helpful, but if you don't have them, it's 100% okay. You don't need them. Masking tape or any other kind of tape. Now, you shouldn't use a bunch of this. You shouldn't use all of it that you want, and this is one you're definitely gonna wanna talk to your parents or responsible adults about because they're not gonna be happy if you use all the tape in the house. Trust me on that. So one of the things that I'll do sometimes is if you have a ruler, I will put the tape right on the ruler and just use 12 inches so that I know that I don't overuse it. If you don't have one, or even if you do, you might just ask the adult in your house to show you how much tape that you are allowed to use. Now remember, all of those materials I showed you are just examples. You can use any one of them or any combination of them, or you might even find something else in your house that makes sense to use. Those are some suggestions, those are some ideas for you, but you don't have to use the same exact things I showed. So once you have permission to use the materials and to build some towers, let's talk about what your towers should really look like or what they should be like. Let me share my screen with you. Now, right underneath where you're watching this video, you're gonna see a spot that says to the student file. And that is gonna link to a Google Drive file, the one that I'm showing you right now. You do need to ask your parents permission. What's going to happen is it will ask you if you wanna make a copy of this file, and you do wanna do that. The reason we're doing that is so that you get your own copy so that you can put your own answers in and it will only be the one that's private for you. So what you're gonna see as we go through here, these are some of the options that I suggested for the materials and a little photograph to remind you. Remember, you don't need all of them, only some of them. When you click on to the next slide, this is our criteria and constraints. And we're gonna take a second to talk about this. And I'm gonna give some options for my older kids here so that you have something that is a little bit trickier, a little bit harder than this. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're designing and building a tower using the following criteria and constraints. And criteria is sort of a fancy word for requirements, constraints, is a fancy word for limitations. So you're gonna be building three towers. Now, if you don't have enough materials to build three or enough time, that's okay, build one or build two. But we're gonna aim for three if you can. Then you're gonna build each tower as tall as possible and you want the towers to be freestanding. They should not lean against a wall or need to be propped up. For constraints, the towers should not be identical. If you make two or three towers, try to make them look as different from each other as you can and the base of your towers should not exceed a regular sheet of notebook paper. 
So a sheet of notebook paper is eight and a half by 11 inches roughly, and it's the same size as a printer sheet of paper. So what I'm saying with this constraint is that if you put this down on the ground, you should be able to build your tower up on top of it and the base or the bottom of your tower shouldn't go outside of the edges of the paper. When you're ready to start building, you want to choose a good spot for it because we're going to come back to these towers and talk about them tomorrow. So you want to put them in a spot that's kind of out of the way so that they don't get knocked over, hopefully, before tomorrow. After you do build your towers, you can go ahead and come over here and you're going to drag these check marks to check off if you met the criterion or if you didn't, maybe you, today you can only build one tower. Maybe you, tomorrow you might go ahead and do the others. But for now, you give yourself a little X right there. And that's okay. It's totally fine if you can't do all three today, or even if you just don't want to do all three. Now I do want to show you one other thing. Off to the side on some of the slides, you will see a picture that looks like a small version of the slide with a play button. These are video directions because I know some of the kids who are watching this are maybe even too young to read. So I want you to be able to play the directions and understand what you're supposed to do on each slide. Now, as I was saying, if you are in, I don't know, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth, seventh, eighth, or even more higher up than that, you're gonna need a little bit more of a challenge. That basic tower challenge, you've probably done it before. So here are some ways that you can make this challenge a little bit tougher for you, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna choose one or more of the following extra little challenges for yourself. Try not using scissors at all. Don't tape the base of your tower down. Don't use tape at all. Use at least two repeating shapes in each tower. So maybe you wanna use um, some rectangular prisms or some cylinders. Choose two, repeat them frequently. Make at least one of your towers inverted, which means the base, the bottom of your tower, will be narrower than the top of your tower. Use more flexible materials. So instead of using things like cardboard and cardstock that have some rigidity, use the tissue paper or the paper bags instead. Make it tougher on yourself. You can also build all three towers within the shape confines on the next slide. I'll talk about that in a moment. Or build your tower to withstand wind or earthquakes. And we'll talk more about this tomorrow on day two. So what I was saying about building all three of your towers within the confines of the shapes, you could either print this slide out or you can just make a version for yourself using a regular sheet of copy paper or notebook paper and draw three big shapes like this. And tower one needs to fit within the rectangle, tower two needs to fit in the circle, tower three needs to fit within the triangle. That will make things a little bit tougher. So give yourself the extra tower challenge by choosing one or more of these to add to your basic criteria and constraints okay now once you're done building your towers it's time to start documenting it's time to start recording some of the details about your towers that you can think about and share with us and the place you'll share is right after the shape slide you'll see this one with the black squigglies and when you go down here there are a bunch of slides that have some questions for you and what you can do is use the slider off to the side and move it over and again you'll see some of these slides have some video directions for you so that if you're having trouble understanding what to do you can just press play and get your directions there. And then if you have any questions, remember you can ask those in the comments underneath the video that you're watching right now. And then I just want to jump all the way to the end on this last slide. If you get a chance today, I would love to see your designs. Again, this is another place where we have to ask our responsible adults permission before you share your work. But if they say yes, show them these three options and ask which one you should use. Now, if for some reason you can't make a copy of the student slides for yourself, what I will do is I'll make a video list that has me going through each of the slides and reading off the questions. And then what you can do is record your answers and your information on notebook paper or maybe in a journal or notebook that you have. And so that is everything for day one. Remember, if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments underneath this video. Remember, before you get started, you want to ask your parents for permission. Happy building, and I will see you back here, same place, same time tomorrow for our next steps and day two. Bye for now.